Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, I'm going to explain to you that what exactly is observable object. But before I do that, I want to show you that I am running Xcode version 11 beta 5. So all of this is going to apply for beta 5 and hopefully the higher versions of Xcode 11. Observable object is basically that object where you want to notify the changes to that particular object to your view. Now, what kind of changes are we talking about? We're talking about changes that maybe you're fetching data from your database, or maybe you're fetching data from a server, like a web API, and you populate your object with those collections or whatever is being returned, some sort of a JSON information, some sort of a data, some sort of a record. And whenever your object property changes, you want to notify the view that, hey, you need to update because there's some new data. For that particular thing, you can actually use observable objects. Now, before Xcode 11 Beta 5, the observable objects were known as bindable objects. So if somebody is talking about bindable object, they're actually talking about observable objects. In this particular example, I'm going to build a very simple timer that is going to update the view every single second. So let's go ahead and start with that. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file, a Swift file, that's fine. And I'm just going to call this a fancy timer, fancy timer. Let's go ahead and add that. Next, I'm going to import Swift UI as well as the Combine framework. Now, Combine is actually the reactive framework that Apple has introduced in iOS 13. Let's go ahead and create our class and we'll call it fancy timer class. Now, Fancy Timer is going to be conforming to the observable object. As you can see, the observable object is a protocol. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to create a property that will be publishing events. So for our timer, we will be updating simply the timer value from 1 to 2 to 3 or 4 and so on. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a property call value and this will be an integer property and it will start with zero. Then we will implement our initializer. Now in the initializer, I'm going to go ahead and create my timer function. So there's already a timer class which we can use with scheduled timer with interval. So in this case, the interval will be one. Repeats is true because we are going to have our timer repeating itself. And then in the block, we can actually get access to the timer in and then update this property self dot value plus equals to one. Now, what we want to do is that whenever this particular property, the value property changes, which it is actually changing every single second, we need to notify the view, the content view that, hey, we have changed. Go ahead and update yourself. But how can we do that? Now, in the previous examples, you use did change, will change, and all those kind of things. But in Xcode 11 beta 5, you can simply decorate it with a property wrapper, which is called published. And that's it. Basically, publish is saying that you are going to be publishing this particular property. And whoever is a subscriber is going to get the latest value from this particular property. Now we can go ahead and jump into our content view and see that how we can actually use this. I'm going to go ahead and resume this. There we go. The first thing I need to do is I need to create an instance of our fancy timer, which is pretty simple because I can simply say fancy timer equals to fancy timer. Great. But since I'm using fancy timer as my observable object, I have to, if, I, if I'm interested in getting the latest information, the latest uh, values, I have to tell it that this is the observed object. When I mark this with a property wrapper observe object, now I can actually start getting the new values from the fancy timer. Currently in the fancy timer, the only value that I'm gonna get is the value itself, the property value. I mean, you, know, you can obviously name this anything you want. You can call it seconds or total time or whatever. We're just calling it value. 
So now after decorating it with the observe object property wrapper, we can actually start using our timer. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this hello world and I'm going to replace it with some value of the timer. Now, since the value is actually integer, that's why I'm using the string interpolation. And I'm just going to say self dot fancy timer, which in this case is a fancy timer dot value. I can also go ahead and change the font to be a little bit bigger. So large title is fine. There we go. Let's go ahead and resume it and see if our timer is actually getting called. Let's go ahead and press the play button. Now you can see that our timer is actually running. Every time the timer value changes, which is actually going on in the fancy timer, it sets the value self.value plus equals to one, which actually publishes the value to the subscribers. The content view gets the value and simply start displaying the timer. And that's the whole point of the observable objects and observe object. If you have any data that you're receiving from an outside source, either it can be a timer simple as this one, or it can even be a database, it can be a web service, it can be from anywhere. And you want to display that, you want to publish that event and pass on the data to the view to display it so that the data as well as the view is completely in sync then you can use the observable object. So this was the observable object in Xcode 11, Beta 5, and in Swift UI. Now let's go ahead and check out one more example of observable objects.